Uh, I think mine is Return of Huge Football Egg. Oh my god, I wrote that one too! Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this is the Gem Jam, where we do an episode-by-episode recap of the 1980s cartoon Gem and the Holograms. Because it is truly outrageous, we have terrible taste, and we adore this show. How does this untold delight? Kit's only watched five episodes. Are you sold? (laughs) I am sold on this show. (laughs) Awesome. All right, uh, today we are going to be going over episode five, Battle of the Bands, written by Christy Marks. This is our last of the first storyline of Gem and the Holograms. It is a five-parter, which I believe is the longest that we ever do in this entire show. There has been a lot building up to this. There's been a lot of explosions, a lot of near-death experiences, a lot of O-Rios. And appropriately, we just left our heroes with synergy exploding are you guys ready for this we're ready i don't think i'll ever be ready so we pick up pretty much right where we left off with With, uh detective malone shouting shut up or i'll smash you to smithereens which if you forgot from last episode malone is the most detective detective to ever detective what you're picturing in your head right now being given only the name detective malone is exactly what he looks like So Malone hightails it out of there after, like, flipping out and blowing up a piece of complicated machinery slash, we may note, evidence. Uh, He leaves, but not before being tailed by a car full of biddies who end up being the holograms in the best disguise that they are ever going to have in this entire show. I gotta say, if, if that were the act, if it were just, like, four old ladies doing glam rock... I would go to every show. I would follow them on tour. I would do their laundry for them. I I would too. I would I would be right there with you, Kit. And straight up, their their designs are like so good. Usually, it's just something that's completely, uh, completely out of sorts. They would just be generic old ladies, but these are actually like what Synergy imagines that the holograms are going to look like when they're eighty five. It's incredible. Uh, so Malone pretty much takes them straight to Eric Raymond's office at Starlight Music. <laughs> And he shows him the photos that he snapped of Synergy and then makes the wild guess that, well, I don't know, maybe Jem is Jerrica Benton. And and what's really great is that he stopped off at, like, City Hall to get the records. And he's like, he, he says to Eric Raymond, guess who owns Starlight Drive-In? Like, it's a mystery. Everything Jerrica's dad owned has the name Starlight. It cannot be a mystery who owns the Starlight Drive-In. Here and he hears that it's Emmett's Benton. He's like, Jerrica's father? Which is weird because... <laughs> This isn't even, like, from the flashback episode that comes up way later. Eric Raymond even says from the beginning that he worked with Emmett. Exactly. He would super know him as Emmett first. And so Eric responds with, This is the last time they make a fool out of me. Even though, uh, that's not the last time they make a fool out of him. It is far from the last time. (laughs) Everybody is constantly making a fool out of Eric Raymond. That's kind of his thing. I mean, he completely dismisses the notion, first off, that... Jerrica could ever be Jem because he's seen them in the same place, which, you know, not yeah. bad, but surely you could come up with something here. So, like, he makes his way over to over to Starlight Music or Starlight Drive-In, Starlight House, Starlight Mansion. He goes to a Starlight place where the holograms are already there disassembling Synergy because they got her warning sign because it turns out Synergy is not blowed up. She just made Malone think she was blowed up. Using holograms. Which is like, did he feel the ha- did he feel the thing go through there? We've been I've been I I have been watching this and trying to figure it out if these are hard light holograms or not. <laughs> this seems to say yes. It's worth noting Synergy, the most advanced Casio keyboard AI eighties computer ever to exist, disassembles into three pieces and plugs into a single outlet. It's true. But, like, what vault is that? It's just the two prongs. <laughs> you don't even have the third one there. It's like, <laughs> like, my lamp takes about that much power. And all they do is they just sort of plug her back together, turn her on at the mansion, and she's fine. Yeah, she's like 90% Star Wars sound effects when she boots up. It's pretty great. Like, <laughs> lasers shoot out of her hologram eyes, and she turns <laughs> Jerrica into Jem. And they are so happy about this, they break into our first musical number of the episode, a a hologram song, She's Got the Power. Which is not a Transformers crossover. I'm mad. See, I thought it was like some Captain Planet crossover. Ooh. 
to be fair, there is there is a I would say there's a passing resemblance between Gaia, spirit of the earth, and uh, yeah. synergy. See, and there's this one and there's this one shot I distinctly remember from the music video where synergy like lifts up her arms and all of the holograms float out on different collars and then spiral <laughs> together into Captain Hologram, I guess. <laughs> I want to I want to talk about she's got the power here for a second. First off, I like this song. I like the refrain of it. I will say that. I feel like the rest of it is kind of meh. I feel like this music video and there's one more time when they repeat it. Uh, Synergy in this music video has way more personality than I think she ever does in the show. And I wish we saw that sort of apparently semi capricious synergy in the show as opposed to just sort of being I'm here Jerica. this is the first song in the show that I've actually liked like I, I think the refrain is really good I think the bridge is good I think it's 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 got a beat and I can dance to it <laughs> I give it a seven uh, and pretty much that's just that's just it for the number that's their celebratory song about how awesome synergy is I really she just seems like their buddy in these in this music video and she's just not in the show. Uh, the Misfits <laughs> are back, and they are mad as heck. Because Man. the Battle of the Bands is tomorrow. And there have been no illegal shenanigans in the past 12 hours. And they want to step up the game on that. Ashley returns, uh, having apparently mastered the art of sliding doors, <laughs> to return the honor jar money, the coveted $30. Which is like $85 in 80s money. Eric has this great line here when he examines Ashley. Uh, and they're like, I don't know, she's one of the Starlight orphans. He's like, ah, one of Jerrica's waifs. How convenient. <laughs> Which kudos to Eric Raymond for using the word waifs outside of like a Ren fair. He's like a Dickensian villain. He is, isn't he? <laughs> Stealing orphans, representing the fall of the industrial society. Jerrica gets a phone call. Where Ashley is like, Jerrica, help, I repent. I no longer wish to belong to the dark side of Gladrock. <laughs> and Eric Raymond says that Gem and the Holograms must appear at Starlight and use Starlight Drive movies. <laughs> Starlight Lady Straddling a Rocket Ship uh, in 30 minutes. And tell no one, or Ashley, quote, pays the price. Like, what What could Eric Graven conceivably do to Ashley? Like, short of murdering her, seriously, what What could he possibly do that they could get away with in this show? Eric Graven's endgame is, like, really confusing here. I, I actually can't remember the full extent of it, but I know Rio does, like, track her down and is like, is everything okay? I know you too well, there's something wrong. Because, of course, she's not telling Rio, because don't tell anybody. And, well, especially uh, Rio, I guess. Especially Rio, because he'll go kick plants or something. <laughs> so Rio just kind of throws this hissy fit and is like, okay, but if you need me, sigh! And, like, dramatically flings himself around, like, like the biggest sad sack there is in the world. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, but you should know, I do hate liars and deceivers. <laughs> Bye. Bye! And they transform to Gem and walk out and... This is, Rio has to be in the hallway at this time. She transforms, goes out in the hallway, where Rio, I guess, is just... He just doesn't think it's weird at all. No. Meanwhile, it is time for the Battle of the Bands at the Music Bowl, uh, where, may I remind you for this and for the rest of the episode, the crowd scenes, especially in these first five episodes, are the best. Everything turns as anime as heck. And, uh, and and though this is a gigantic stadium, it apparently has the backstage of a small town children's theater. I mean, don't they all? Right, which is where the misfits are with Ashley. They put her in the boo box from Hook. <laughs> <laughs> after like after this weirdly prolonged chase scene too, where like you should watch watch the door in this because it sort of disappears depending <laughs> on what shot you're in. Uh, and, like, sometimes the, the the misfits are gigantic, and Ashley is, like, a regular person size. Sometimes she's super tiny. There's It is non-Euclidean. And, you know, Stormer doesn't participate in this until the very end, when the misfits are like, I knew she'd gone soft, you're either with us or against us, and Stormer ditches Ashley in a box. Is it just and me, or is Stormer, like, the most complex character in this show? Her and Aja. I've waited a whole episode. I've waited a whole episode and a third. We- 
finally get what you want. You finally get what you want. A, a misfit. misfit song. And it's a good one. Frankly, it Taking is the it Misfits all. taking it all. Which, like, again, the Misfits songs, I'm sorry, the Misfits songs are better. And this they really is like, are. This is a really good song. Uh, it also has some really great imagery in it, uh, which is a nice change of pace from last episode, which was just... The... It, it also does include everybody's favorite image. <laughs> the return of the huge football egg from which gigantic football pizzazz hatches. <laughs> <laughs> to just to, to impart a metaphor about Machiavellian politics. <laughs> there are two things besides the besides the egg that I love in this song, and it is the fact that they have Rio fun bucks worth a thousand dollars each. They just fly <laughs> by some of the money they grab as Rio's face in profile, and I just can't help but think of like bison dollars from the Street Fighter movie. <laughs> Yes. The real space moves on them, which makes me think it's the Nixon bucks from Futurama. And then also they go to a bank to get these real fun bucks and they hand them this and they hand this teller just this piece of paper that says prize on it. <laughs> <laughs> and they have prize. We gave him we gave her all of our prize like fools. I also just like that uh, taking it all does, in fact, include Rio because everybody wants Rio. Everybody wants Rio. Everybody wants football Rio. Everybody wants chauffeur Rio. Everybody wants Tux Rio. Everybody wants Rio dramatically in a brown jacket Rio. I just want some Rio fun bucks. <laughs> They'll be worth five British pounds once I kidnap the Queen of England. After they perform, the, 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 the millionaire whose name we keep forgetting. Howard Sands. Howard Sands, the strange wandering millionaire. He points to this giant guitar next to the stage. and He says, this is the rock meter. The winning band will be whoever scores the most on the rock meter. It's just this giant guitar with stars on it that light up. It is basically the audience meter from Guitar Hero, and it is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. This thing extends <laughs> into heaven. It is a testament of man's arrogance in the interpreting the glam rock. Brace yourselves, guys. We are about to get to the best part. You think anything before this would be the best part, you were wrong. <laughs> but in order to get there first, the holograms arrive at the drive-in, uh, which is where Synergy just was. And it's worth noting that inside this, is it's like just a dusty room. It's not very big, which makes me wonder... What about, like, the hypertech walls and everything? What about, like, the seven bands worth of musical instruments and, and fashion? Did Were all those fake? Yeah, they were all just fake. Were, the, were they all holograms? Has everything been a lie this whole time? Everything has just been a lie. Is Annie having an existential crisis? Yes, she is. I may be. I may be. But, you know, at least it makes a bit more sense than what's about to happen. Because, and I know I've used this phrase before, but it applies again. There is a non-Euclidean car chase around the drive-in as, uh, <laughs> as Jerrica tries to escape Zipper and his goons and Eric Raymond, who are there. Basically, there's this point where, uh, where Jerrica's driving the car, Zipper's on a motorcycle. Zipper hops the fence on his bike to pull ahead and cut off Jerrica in the rock and roadster. She stops. Another goonie drives behind her while driving in a straight line over the background. <laughs> he drives over a cart and a fence, just in a straight... It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It is it is an Escher painting. My, my actual favorite part is right at the end when the goons finally grab Jim, and uh, we hear Zipper... We've heard Zipper talk a few times, but never to, like, this extent, I feel. Mm. And his voice is a contorted mockery of a human voice. And she says, Rod's over, Jim. You're surrounded. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And then she jumps out of the car. <laughs> like they cut off the car so it can't move. So Jim jumps out of the car. And both of them look surprised that this this had never occurred to them that she would do this. So she she runs off across the, the lot. And Zipper comes up beside her on the motorcycle. And I swear to God, she goes from like vertical to horizontal over the space of a single frame. And next thing you know, Zipper's carrying her with one arm. <laughs> Which is horrifically dangerous. She's basically like she has to be she has to be completely prone at this point to not have like her knees and or at least her feet skinning along the ground here. Yeah. And this is uneven terrain. And she must weigh like fifty pounds. 
the, the only thing that Jerk is able to do before she gets dragged back into the, the old Synergy room is she drops her, uh, she drops one of her earrings while Synergy has the most emotion that I think I've ever heard out of her. Yeah, she's just basically doing the snake thing from Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, she totally is. She's just screaming, Jerrica! Eric basically tells them all as he's, as he's tied them up that he is going to hold all of them captive until after the contest. And again, what is Eric Raymond's end game here, guys? Because he's shown his face. They can clearly connect it with him. What's he going to do after this contest, after he wins control of Starlight Records? Are they not going to go to the cops? Back at the concert, Rio rescues Ashley from getting crushed in a trunk. And she would have died. Because the boo box was on its way into a trash compactor because reasons. Yeah? For no reason. No reason whatsoever. No reason. The misfits were content to just leave her there, and then this thing gets into a compactor. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> Harold Sands is like, well, if they don't show up, it looks like I'm just going to have to give it to the misfits. And he and the Baroness just kind of start moving in kind of like a hysterical sort of way. But the great thing is that Harold Sands himself, he kind of does like the arm flail of a running sexy anime girl. And that's supposed to uh, distinguish, I guess, his his fear over what's happening to the holograms right now. Here's my favorite part about Howard Sands looking at his watch here to say he have 15 minutes. There's kind of this animation where it looks like he's lifting his shoulder, but the way that arm comes in, and I have... I have, I have what I have been reading a lot of Mary Worth, so let me tell you that I'm well versed in how hands can and cannot go in these animated spaces. It looks as though someone has inserted their arm off camera for him to look at, which I mean, considering he has cronies to carry around his pictures of his mansions for him, that's not too far out of the realm of possibility. So he looks at his watch. And then he's like, you have 15 minutes. And then it switches to Eric Raymond, who has his hand in the same position, but now lowers it. Was Eric Raymond just shoving his watch in Howard Sands' face? And so Rio rushes off because Ashley is like, Eric Raymond is up to some business. Meanwhile, back at the drive-in, the girls have a plan that I have watched this episode so many times, and I cannot for the life of me tell you how many steps there are to this plan. I I just have a whole bunch of words. I have a whole bunch of nouns written here in my notes, but it is all headed by various convoluted hologram shenanigans. Uh, and right below it, in a in a big box, is the word in all caps: lions. Near as I can tell, what happens is, is you know when Jerrica dropped her her earring, out one of her earrings outside. It's a remote projector. And she is apparently back in contact with Synergy. Jem just says, okay, Synergy, go. An entire pride of male lions comes charging down the hall, only the same clip of the lions over and over again. So this is like a, a Stanley Kubrick hallway that never ends with lions running down it. And the guys in the warehouse freak out. And there's the guy guarding the door outside. And he sees the cops coming, so he freaks out. And so the guys in the inside are trying to get out because lions, for reasons. The guy in the outside is trying to come in because cops, because that's what you do. You just flee further into the building they've surrounded. They collide with each other, can't get out the door. And then they look back and they see that the girls are gone. So they run over to where the girls were, and then the girls suddenly rematerialize and bolt for the door. And then Kimber gets caught because Kimber is the weak link and must be destroyed for the survival <laughs> of the group. Kimber gets caught, and she's like, no, go on without me, and they refuse to do it. So, and so the cops show up again! <laughs> Only this time it's the real cops! And then, in, like, the background, there are, like, five clones of Eric Raymond going, release her! Synergy, sit, like, creates, like, five different Eric Raymonds to yell at Zipper and his guys, and then, and then Rio shows up with the cops, and everyone gets arrested, and... And, like, all of that was for nothing because the sh cops showed up anyway. Like, it was just time-wasting until the cops got there. And then they allow Rio to drive a squad car back to the concert. <laughs> Why is Rio allowed to drive a squad car? Again, let me, let me read you my notes from various convoluted hologram shenanigans. <laughs> Lions. Cops are here. Lions, it's outside. Fake <laughs> cops. Giant zipper. Holograms still here? Eric's. Many Eric's. Rio cops. And Rio, I guess, smooches. I do have at the very end of that, let's smash our faces together, Rio. I love you so much. Oh, Rio. Yeah, we have like, we, 
this this episode, this this cartoon episode has like two minutes left. So it smushes everything together as fast as it possibly can here. In our last song of the holograms performing right as the right as the prize is about to be awarded to the misfits of music is magic. They go to the award goes to the miss and then they start playing. This song is another one of the ones that they end up using a lot because it's so generic. The music video itself is mostly a concert, except for what I have a hard time telling whether or not it's in music video land or if this is really happening. Eric Jacks the Rock and Roadster. (laughs) And he just sort of drives off and then like and you come back to him later and then he's surrounded by cop cars. So I guess he's arrested. Once the music video is over, we have Kimber over and over again say, outrageous, truly outrageous. And then you'd think that would be the end, but we actually have a a denouement, if you will. (laughs) Uh, As we come full circle, the hero's journey is over. (laughs) Cherica Bent returns to Starlight Music with Rio in tow. They open up the main office where Eric was sitting, and they find Eric in there. Collecting his stuff. And collecting stuff. And Jericho goes, aren't you supposed to be in jail? And Eric says the phrase that I love, which is, it's amazing what lawyers can do if you pay them enough. Is the implication that he's out on bail or that they got the charges dropped or, or I don't... Hush. Kit, it's amazing what lawyers can do if you pay them enough. Eric, like, touches Jerrica's shoulder, and so, of course, Rio responds to this by punching him. That's appropriate escalation. Yeah, good job, Rio. I thought Raymond actually did slap Jerrica. Did he? Oh, I distinctly remember that, like, Eric's on his way out of the office and Jerrica mouths off and he, like, backhands her. And then Rio punches him in the face and Rio earns my very temporary approval because of this. Yeah, the important thing is someone, someone male presenting has touched or spoken to or made eye contact with Jerrica and this will not stand. Anyway, Eric gets decked and it's awesome. Uh, he also dumps the picture of Synergy in there. Into, yeah. his, uh, into his little box, which is funny because we will not touch that for, like, a season, I think. It's going to be a long time until we actually deal with uh, with Eric Raymond trying to figure out what synergy is. Yeah. Which is pretty disappointing because, personally, I think it's a good hook. And so we end on uh, Rio and Jerrica going to stand in front of the uh, in front of the windows looking out. And Jerrica goes, I just want to create something my father would be proud of. And Rio leans over her shoulder and goes, he'd be proud already. And they end on a kiss. Truly outrageous, truly, truly, truly outrageous. And that's our first five episodes. Yep. So, so retrospective, Kit, this is your first time going through this show. Thoughts? My thoughts are scattered and broken like auto glass in the road after an accident. That sounds about right. I don't know how to handle this show. It, every time I think I've got a grasp on how it works, it throws a curveball at me and I can't deal with it. We have some great stuff coming up on the show. Now that our five-parter is over, we've got a three-parter coming up. Uh, there's one or two two-parters, but for the most part, we are about to get into uh, what is maybe one of my favorite segments of Gem of the Holograms, which is movies. Uh, we go to China. We go to a world hunger shindig. It is very, very 80s in here. And I cannot wait to share this with you. Well, until next time, until we start getting into what is definitely not how movies work, you guys are going to love it. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this has been the Gem Jam, where outrageousness is next to godliness.